Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. For this flight I'm going to go from Helsinki in Finland to Tallinn in Estonia and I will do so in a Yak 18T. This is, as you can see, a very nicely detailed freeware plane. Uh, the virtual cockpit is pretty darn good. And on the exterior there are numerous liveries and I liked this one the best because of Tweety. Um, I thought I thought a putty cat tat. I can't say it. But anyway, it looked like a solid delivery to me. And so this is available on the xplane.org forum. It's by PWDT, but the person, the user on the forum who posted it is Zeelin142. So uh, thanks for this. This is a marvelous little plane. And I'll talk more about it as we go along. So of course we are continuing with the Apollo 12 audio with Pete Conrad and Al Bean on the surface of the moon and Dick Gordon in orbit. Uh, uh, Bean and Conrad are currently in the middle of an EVA, their second on the surface of the moon. And so uh, we will continue listening to that. And I'm gonna take off. Even the brake sound, that's good. Uh, oh, we got some wind. Should be able to lift off. We've got some flickeries, I think that's because of the clouds. We've got real world weather on. So there's a trainer. Though it can carry passengers as well. The never exceed speed is 161 knots and the maximum speed is 141. So it's a good thing that our flight's only 54 nautical miles because it's pretty darn slow. The Conrad and Bean continue to have a lot of fun during their EVA, as you can hear. This only has a range of 400 nautical miles. With its standard tank, okay. which is that? remarkable. That's only a three hour flight. It's got a 360 horsepower engine. Well, unfortunately, there seems to be a texture gap, a line there. We'll just focus on the right side, which is the heart of Helsinki right now. Okay. 
That's a good top in that one. Hold on. Go on. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now you need a core tube in the bottom of that trench. Is that right, Houston? That's affirmative. And Al, uh, when you get a chance, can we get your uh, photo numbers? Uh, I want to stay above 3,000 right. feet because of the flickering. Yeah, it seems to stop at 3,000 feet. Okay. Turning that off would help, it doesn't. Well, let's try and get a bit okay. higher. Put the top on the you better believe it. Okay. Here we come. Okay, there's a soil space in there. It probably did because it spaced your scoop so well. Better believe it. Interesting, lots of lighthouses on those islands right there. Hmm. At least I think that's what they are. There's other lighthouses as well. sample the uh, core tube uh, sample from the end from the bottom and also uh, the gas analysis sample. Okay, departing Finland. Fragments. Well, we're still over Finnish waters though. Roger, that's surface rock fragments. Yeah, we're going to get a hold of them. Get a target first. Oh, I forgot to check out those buildings close to the airport. Shoot. There were unique buildings close to the airport that I saw on the previous flight. Forgot to take a look at them. Oh well. Roger, copy. You got some rocks in the gas analysis, and would you also confirm that you've got the environmental sample? So this first flew in 1967. Oh, sorry. I was reading up on the Yak-18. Looks like it's slow because it was built strong and uh, can do aerobatics. Can pull significant G's. So it's got that going for it. Though not all planes that pull significant G's have to be heavy, necessarily. Right there. There. 
Okay, I'm hoping that Estonia looks proper now. Last time I flew to it, it had scenery issues. I've tried to fix that. When I say heavy, I mean this thing's max takeoff weight is still only 1,650 kilograms. Empty weight's 1.2 tons, though. It's got a nine-cylinder engine, interestingly enough. Still can't see Estonia with the haze. And we're losing sight of Finland. Makes it sort of seem like it's a longer distance than you might think, but I mean, it is longer than the English Channel, and we couldn't see Britain and France at the same time on that flight. That's 34,000. Not the best wind. Just about, uh, no the problems. And then a couple more steps ought to take you right to Halo Crater. Sounds like a pretty good sector. That also says that we're running right into the sun. Does that agree with you? That's affirmative. If you're running right into the sun and uh, directly at your 9 o'clock position, you'll see the lamp in a couple more steps and you'll be right there. I got the lamp in sight. Could you imagine them not being able to find a limb again? Say, uh, would you giraffes give us uh, some comment on your boot penetration as you move across there, what you're doing now and what you had there back there? They are apparently doing some good traveling on the surface of the moon there, even without the rover. Oh, that's quite a... Oh, no, the land doesn't seem too inviting. But... Oh, I think that's just a texture difference, but maybe if I get it like this, turn a little bit. That's looking okay. Okay, now if you'll just go uh, directly to the east of the center of Bench Crater, and then continue directly east right into the sun. And then at 9 o'clock, you'll see the lamb in a couple more steps and you'll be there. Sharp crater and should resemble it. 
think I have it in sight, but I'm not sure. It's a couple of bucks. Hey, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an EMU break. Huh. Oh, Get interesting wisps of okay. clouds here. Oh, the carpet is pretty nice, so let's spend some time in here while we're over water. Gives us something else to look at. I feel like the speed dial is overly optimistic. <laughs> um, obviously in kilometers uh, per hour, but... I I mean, since the never exceed speed is, uh, what was it again? 300 kilometers per hour, the fact that it goes up to 450 is is optimistic. <laughs> well, yeah, you really don't need it to go that far, hopefully. I assume for aerobatics it would have air brakes. But, well, I guess we can check. Uh, okay. No, I guess I, not. I, I know where we are. Guess it doesn't need him. And the EMU check line reads about 55% O2 Houston. Line reads 55 02 also Houston. Copy 55 both. Beautiful. It's not a pressurized cabin, so um, ceiling is limited by oxygen. They have a sample bag. Come in, come in. Look at that. It's like I got two seats in the back here. Uh, I think I see Estonia up front. Oh, uh, there's some green on the horizon anyway. Should be a fairly short flight. Really nice work in here. I mean, I guess somewhat adapted for an English speaker because it says starter, low speed, stall, primer. That's good. Prob I mean, uh, the, all the dials seem to have uh, labels for English. So that uh, I can effectively use it being a non Russian speaker. Poor Apollo 13. We'll probably get to listen to their travails, but they did not get a chance to uh, get these experiences that Albina and Pecan were hoping that they would. We are now over Estonian waters. Land is still in the distance. Uh, 
but it's sure different than where we've been. It looks almost like, like, uh, like it's more, uh, it, the, the material is more cohesive and forms clumps instead of being so nice and smooth. They can go around behind you. I was waiting for the gnome to damp out. So after this flight, uh, it'll be from Tallinn to Warsaw in a MiG-21, so completely different pace. Completely yeah, different pace. A little further away, back up a little. Shoot a 15 foot, it's okay. Yeah. How about a dig? Alright. I'll be back to collect in just a second when I get this 15 footer. It's Halo Crater A, and it's slightly big, yeah. Damn, we shoot about four here. Okay. Oh, interesting. Get this, uh, get, get some sample bags and we'll... Okay, okay. Good stuff. Okay. Let me, uh, boy, it sure is fine. It's kind of like over at the other, uh, at, uh, Chart Crater. Yeah. It looks the same except on the surface. It looks, it looks almost finer. Uh-huh. Wait a minute, I get you another thing. Uh, if you saw this on Earth, you'd think it was a, a real soft dirt that had just been rained on recently. Well, it's still uh, not hard rain, right, but just a uh, sprinkle so that the droplets will go. Now that's a good sample bag, bro. Uh, it's 12B, Houston, the sample bag. Yeah, hey, hello, crater. Copy 12B. There's a couple of with a couple of three dimple craters uh, in the south side of it. Stand by, Pete. Okay, stand by, Pete. Okay, well, let's it's hope that looks proper. Way, yeah, I, well, look, I think it's a halo crater right here. Right. We're seeing some good signs. Last time I visited it, it was completely yeah, underwater. And, you know, that was not a reflection of reality. That was just a glitch in the photo scenery. But this is better. But this is a 20 feet diameter. Is it right on the rim of the surveyor crater? Is it? That's affirmative and uh, from your comments on the three dimples we show that you're there. Okay, what do you want in it? We'd like to get uh, the pan and the it seems to be a very tall tower for s of some sort. I don't know what that might be. Let me see. This is Surveyor Crater. Let me look at the chart. There's a nice rock right there. There's Surveyor. Look at the map. That's even harder to get a crater worth looking at where we are. There is a Talon TV tower. Well, wait, it seems to have disappeared. Okay, Pete, it's uh, your call. You're the local experts. This one, I was yeah, looking uh, it up. See a better location for that double, uh, Talon TV field. tower oh, is 314 meters, a thousand uh, feet. To find the right, uh, Fairly tall. Right, uh, crater, Houston. Uh, hey, Pete, I think it's that area right over there. there. That, that, uh, Halo is this first one right here, the little one. And then all those others are mixed over, according to the chart. That okay, could so be it. I mean, I'm only at 1,300 feet right now. And looking at a picture of it, it really does tower over the landscape quite a lot. I don't know if it'll be rendered properly or whether it's just an autogen set to the right height. It looks more like an autogen obelisk. That is, uh, what the force history is. How many pounds and how much force? Sure will. Wait, look at this little Nido crater right here. Good place to sample. Oh, look at all the glass at the bottom of that baby. Got a lot of that, though. Huh? Got a lot of glass. Now uh, there? Yeah. I think that's Halo right there. Keeps disappearing, though. 
I'm pretty sure that's what that's supposed to be, but it sure doesn't look like it, the TV tower. The TV tower looks, you know, like the CN Tower or one of those sorts of things. A spire with an observation deck. Oh no, it's still underwater. I was fooled by this area. But if you see where Talon is supposed to be, it's still underwater. Pete, we copy uh, 60 and 110 on the film. Doesn't look like it's fixed at all. Gosh darn it. I don't know what's up with this. Yeah, well, that's supposed to be the TV tower, but it doesn't look like it. Got a very active cooling tower over there. Pete, now we'd like you to uh, go ahead and get the pans taken on the LMP's camera. You can either have uh, L do the pans or switch cameras. Your choice. And yeah, otherwise we've got some serious and inexplicable flooding up ahead. Seems to be everything past this river. There's a river here. And then everything on one side of the river is messed up. The autogen is there. The buildings are placed. But the ground texture is water. We're gonna fly alongside the airfield and then try and land. The airfield seems to be properly formed, if you will. Well, there there are cars on the highway. Highway 11, well, goes into 1, though. Every country has a Highway 1. And suddenly it's Venice. <laughs> I mean, this is not good. Check the landing gear. Bottom of the uh, hand grip portion of the upper tube. He's really driving that baby. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Looks like it's got a coating over the uh, hammer, Pete, and I'm not 
Well, I'll have to try something else over here. That's affirmative, Al. There is a coating on that hammer, and that's probably what you're knocking off. And uh, also, we want to be sure to get uh, the site there documented. I wonder if there's something else interfering with it, because I haven't seen this anywhere else, obviously. Hey, there's a scenery conflict around here. Okay, time to go into the cockpit. Whatever goes wrong, he goes, well, that's okay. The camera's still usable, right? Yep. Yeah, and you're not sleeping. It's two feet. Stay, stay there. Let me tighten it up for you. Getting some extra flaps in. Well, the lights say we we're low, as usual. But, again, I have a strong propensity for being too high and fast after doing a whole lot of space planes, so... I'm being very deliberate about staying low, usually. I'd done these flights as part of a live stream before, but decided that my flying had not been up to par because of the constantly going too high and fast thing, so I'm effectively doing them over again as a penalty. We definitely have some wind to deal with. Doesn't like that. Oh. I can't. Which is there you go. Okay, well, speaking of sloppiness, but anyway, it is down. And a bit of brakes. I got enough. Now that'll be enough. Right right pretty there. fast still. All right. Well, at least there is an airport, but the rest of the city is not looking proper. Rudder is pretty frisky. Okay, I'm trying to reach for the audio. Pausing the audio. Oops, oops, oops. As I try and find a taxiway around here somewhere. Trying not to go too fast. 
All right, so we have arrived in Estonia. Next flight's gonna be a MiG-21. That'll be a freeware one as well. Um, and it seems to be all right, even though it uh, was originally made, I think, in X-Plane 10. But this one was a lovely plane and uh, a nice short flight. So with this, I'll say thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.